Hey, what's up guys? So today I am going to be talking to you about the Solarized Osaka theme and it is pretty rad. I have to say I'm really digging it and I have plugged this in with t Max, Zella J, Alacrity, D-Menu, DWM, SL Status, and a few other things and I just have to say I'm digging it. So let's check it out, shall we? As you can see, I have a pretty normal configuration, color, scheme, whatever. And this is an alacrity, of course I'm in DWM. And this matches my other color scheme, which is Zella J and Tmux, which I have inside of Zella J. Now, a person would probably be like, you're using a multiplexer inside another multiplexer. Like, what gives? Well, so here's kind of what's going on. It is true I could make another pane just like this. But here's my problem. I can't take my mouse and, like, drag it back and forth and that sort of thing. That's really important to me. So that's kind of a deal breaker. Well, I have a different solution. Now what I like to do is just split the pane and now I can just take my mouse and I can move it wherever I want. I also have key bindings to do this as well. I can, I have key bindings in Zella J, but they're rather minimal. Um, takes me forever to resize a pane, so I don't like it. Okay. So why would I why would this be useful? Well, it's kind of easy to kind of see if you've done this before. Let's just say for argument's sake, you want to uh, edit this file right here, right? Now you need to run it, right? So we're going to go into our virtual environment, right? Which is what? Then activate. Okay. Now we're in our virtual environment. I can run that environment. Now I can just move that out of my way. I can make all the changes that I need. And over here, maybe I need to do some sysadmin work with my page. And so I can do pretty much everything all at once. My hands never really leave the keyboard. This is one of the main reasons why I like using it. So a reason why I like Zella J though over Tmux is because the tab thing never really made sense to me in Tmux. Now I will be fair, I never really sat down to learn it. It was a little boring to me and it just, you know, if something is not just intuitive to me naturally, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time to try and get that to work. But here... This makes perfect sense. Now I can come back between the two tabs, right? Very easily. And I usually have a few open. And so, for example, I could do something like open up my New York. This is kind of what kind of helps me do like my day to day stuff. So, like anything that I have for that day or or a week i usually just kind of stick it in here somewhere and pretty much just forget all about it that's kind of how my system <laughs> works and so if for example i needed to get back over here you know shift h to change the buffers in neovim comes back and forth it's really simple and it's something that is very intuitive to me. So what did I do? Well, let's just kind of backtrack a little bit. I took Deva's Life's color scheme. It's this solarized Osaka theme. And I just plugged it into my NeoVim. Then I went to his repository on GitHub. And he has like the color schemes all figured out for like Alacrity, T-Marks, and a bunch of other things that I assume that he uses or other people use. And so he had one for Alacrity and he had one for Tmux. So I just took those main colors, plugged them into Tmux and Alacrity. And then after that, I needed one for Zella J. 
So when I had the one for Zella J, then I kind of started getting the ball rolling. And I said, well, it would be nice if I had that same color scheme for DWM and D menu and SL status and that sort of thing. So I did all of that. And then this is kind of what you're looking at. So what do you think of my color scheme? Leave me a comment in the section below. And I just have a question. What kind of NeoVim content would you like to see? You know, I've made a couple of just tongue in cheek type videos regarding NeoVim and people just really didn't get it. And then I did the zero to hero thing and like it was live and I was just kind of just playing around and I didn't expect anybody to sit down and watch you know an hour and a half video or anything but i did hope that somebody would flip through it and get something out of it and it doesn't seem like that was the case but i digress let me know what you'd like to see if you haven't smashed that subscribe button what are you waiting for go ahead and smash it i have a whole bunch of cool content coming out i have a python boot camp coming out shortly it's totally rad i haven't heard that word in a while I have you and also i have a podcast coming out on youtube very soon it might go on to other platforms i'm not sure yet and that's pretty much it have a great day everyone and i'll see you on the next one